hop out the wheel like a fence. I 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 have out the wheel like I'm fast. I have out the wheel like I'm fast. I have out the wheel like I'm fast. I strip the door like a lash. Boy, I'm a king out of hell. I just wanna give me a mess. And live at the top of the planet. Yo, 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 welcome back to Classic Conversation. We got uh we got a big guest on here today. I got Terrence. Uh the Olympian, done won medals, currently coaching at NC A N T North Carolina A N T. So Terrence, man, for everybody that don't know, give us a little of your background. You know, how was it to run for the Olympics? What it's like to have medals under your belt? Because everybody don't got them. I know everybody in the hood say they fast, but until you go up against <laughs> people in the Olympics. Right. Um, and how, and how, also for the list, how do we pronounce your last name? Is it Tremel or Tremel? How do you how you Tremel. pronounce your last name? Tremel. Tremel. Yep. Okay. And then too. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. Tremel. So um, I'm from Decatur, Georgia. Um, went to high school at Southwest DeKalb. And uh, actually, that's where my track career began. I actually played football and ran track at Southwest. And um, actually, uh, running track was something that I did to prove uh, my basketball coach wrong. Uh, hmm. I, made the, ah. I, made the, I made the basketball team at the, at the junior high. And at the time, we didn't have uh junior high track and field so we had to go to our high school and so i, I knew that he was the uh the uh, track coach at the school and so i knew that the day was going to come where i was going to try out and so <clears throat> what wound up happening is when i got there for tryouts uh i found out that he was actually the girls coach mm. and so um wow you know so much for showing him, but <laughs> what I wound up doing was uh, landing in the care of Coach Cobb, Coach Napoleon Cobb, a legendary coach. Um, he's he's had over, I want to say, 15 or 16 state titles mm -hmm. um, from my high school. We actually won the national championship uh, my 11th grade year uh, in high school, and so um, really – a, a, a really classy guy, um, a legend. Um, he actually coached me to my second Olympic medal in 2004. Wow. Um, and uh, say about my junior year in high school, that's when things really kicked off for me track wise. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I played football as well. So my 11th grade year was really a, a a great year for me. We won the state championship in football. Um, I had the game saving interception at the end of the game. Wow. Um, so and, was you as good in football as you were in track? Yeah, and football was my first love. Um, track was just something where I gained a lot of um, notoriety and a lot of success pretty quickly in track mm -hmm. so i just wanted to see where track would take me right um, football what, what, wise i played since i was i gonna say eight or well nine right what position so did you play? play so High i started school? out at receiver and started then I receiver. Into, okay. uh safety free safety uh and at the time you know you didn't have too many spread offenses then it wasn't yeah. it wasn't the uh how i and, and yeah and yeah you had, the right wide, you had the wing t yeah um if anybody was really throwing they had twins you know what i mean right so, right right it wasn't like five maybe wide. a little motion maybe yeah. a little motion right right no rpos no yeah. read options no none of that at that time so um so yeah we were either coming downhill or we were in cover two or cover three. And, and, right. and that's what it was. Playing grown yeah. man ball back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then, um, in, uh, in 96, when the Olympics were here in Atlanta, I got a chance to see actually go to the event. Uh, so I watched my event being done. I, I, I ran the, uh, 110 high hurdles. Okay. And so, um, the guy that would become the Olympic champion and break the Olympic record wound up being my mentor and training partner at the University of South Carolina. Uh, wow. His name's Alan Johnson. Wow. And ironically enough, he's the head coach at A&T 
and he hired me as his assistant. That's the uh, relationship. That's the relationship yep, right now. Yep, that's it. That's it. Yep. So um the first time I left Atlanta and Allen was the influence behind it, we did some monumental things. And so the second time that I left Atlanta to go to the other Carolina, <laughs> he was the influence behind it. So we're looking to do some more monumental things. Right, right. What so so how do how do one go from high school, college to get into the Olympics? Like what's that process? Is it a difficult process to be able to run in the Olympics? Or do you just gotta make time? Or is the training gruesome? Is it like so the US Olympic team is the hardest team to make in the world, hands down. It's not even close. Um <laughs> you get to the Olympics by qualifying for the Olympic trials. So for the Olympic trials, I think it's now 48. You have to be the top 48 in uh, in the States as far as the times go. Mm -hmm. And that will get you to the Olympic trials. And then once you get there, you have to go through qualifying. So it's um, you have your prelims, your quarterfinals, your semis, and then your finals. And only the top three make it. So Dang. that's um, so it goes from 48 to three. Dang. So you got to be moving, moving to be in that three. You got to be on top of your game. The day of the finals is a bad day to have a bad day. Wow. <laughs> right. So, so, so how long, how strenuous, how long is that process from, from getting to prelims all the way up until the finals? Like we talking years, like how long are we days. talking to, from that process? Like two all days. in a matter of two days. Yep. So the so y'all running that much? So the Olympic trial, so it's it's you're running basically four times. You run twice on one day, twice on the other day. And whoever and the top three out of that is who top makes top three it. out of that. Wow. So that number gets to decrease real quick then. Just like Very you said, it went from it goes, 40 something. Yeah. It goes from 48 to 24. Wow. And that's crazy. So I guess that's the one sport that don't care nothing about what your film look like. You still you got to come here to qualify, and if you don't on qualify, that day, on that day you have to be first, second, or third. Wow, that's it. Like you, it's, like it's you say, you can't afford to have a bad day, right? It's you can't afford to have a bad day, right? Right. Wow. So how did it? How did it? How did it feel when you won your first medal? Because everybody ain't got those. Everybody can't say they got medals, right? So people can say they got championships, but that's a team. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you right. got your own personal medal. Like, right. how does it feel when you won your first medal? I was blown away because uh, at the time I was only 21. So I was a Dang. college junior at the time. And I was the youngest on that team. I was the youngest hurdler by, I want to say, eight years. Dang. Um, so you run against grown men. Full grown. And so, and so I, um, I felt like, I felt like I could get fourth. I, I, like I knew I could get fourth. Right. And I thought if somebody had a bad day, I could probably get like a bronze, you know? And so that was kind of where I was looking. And then as the race went on, like the defending champion who was Alan Johnson, my mentor and the defending silver medalist, um, Mark Creer were side by side and they were like arch rivals and so they were kind of battling back and forth and kind of hitting hurdles along the way mm -hmm. and i stayed just a little bit cleaner um and i went from fourth to second between hurdle eight nine and ten there's only ten hurdles right and so i was in fourth up until about the eighth hurdle and then i went from fourth to second wow. and uh came away with silver and so uh, my mind was really blown at that time because I I, I didn't foresee that. No. no but now that, now so, that you're thinking you're going to get fourth and then you come in second? Right. 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 So you, you're a silver medalist. You say you're a junior in college. What's life like once you get back to college? Now you got a silver medal under your belt. Like how, the, how, how does college, how is college? How does that, what's that like? 
Because you ain't the regular Terrence when you step back on camera. Right. Man. Right. <laughs> right. So t- speak to that, Trent. Speak to that right there. When you get back on the college campus or in the dorm, you walk into class now. What's life like now? It is different because everybody knows because everybody was watching. Mm-hmm. And not only that, I mean, financially, it was completely different. I um, bet. Because I'm, I'm on the contract now. Right. Right. And we making real money now. <laughs> <laughs> you right. NIL right. before NIL even started. Right. 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 So, so now thing, things are different. Um, and when I went back, I actually did not go back in the fall because the season was so late in 2000. We didn't get done. My season wasn't over until early October, I want to say. Mm. Um, semester was halfway done at that point. Right. So I came back in the spring. I mean, I hung out a little bit in the fall, but I re-enrolled in the spring. And then um, when I got back, I was pledging. So. Oh, what you pledge? Omega Sci-Fi. So you Omega okay. Sigma. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. But I got I got family members and everybody. They they. Yeah, we got sigmas and then Qs and maybe a few some capitals, maybe a few, but <laughs> sigmas and Qs. <laughs> so, so so yeah, so I come back, I have a medal, and then you know, I'm the Qs later on in that semester. Oh, you yeah. always off the chart, then so you always the out there. Yeah. You, you always out there. I know. Oh, yeah. You. Yeah. I already know it. <laughs> I already you probably, know it you probably, sign know it. Art, probably sign the autographs at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was like that. Yeah, so, everybody is. Yeah. So. Right. Um, but the 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 good thing is though, um, you know, I came back like I came right back, and I finished my degree, That's and right. just stepped into competing on the circuit full time after that, okay. and uh made uh as a matter of fact i won the world indoor championship the very next season so i became world champion the very next season uh right. indoors uh, so the guy that won that won the gold in the olympics in 2000 i actually beat him and won the gold and he got silver so we traded places uh at the world it. championships How that hard. How hard was it for you to stay focused though? Like after you got your first one, you on the contract and you getting all this notoriety, you know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes people let up off the gas. Mm-hmm. Um, that especially they don't got that dog in them, they'll let up off the gas. So how how was it for you mentally to stay locked in, even though you had done had success? I didn't come from a whole lot. Mm-hmm. And so this was new. And that I helps. enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I ain't trying to go back. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, you know. So, I got I got people at home to to, to look out for. Mm-hmm. So that was a that was a major part of it too. Yeah, definitely get that. Definitely get that. And so you won your second one indoor. So, so how was second, it? That was my second. That was my second medal. Um, so, so a different event. Same event, but same but, event. Well, yeah um so indoors is shorter than outdoors right so instead of the 110 hurdles i ran the 60 meter hurdles so Mm -hmm. instead of going over 10 hurdles we went over five um and uh let me see all in all so i have two olympic medals uh two silver so i got silver in 2000 silver in 2004 uh 2008 was my third olympic team but i got injured in the first round at the olympics okay um that was the one where i was in world record shape but when you when you when you push your body to the limit like that Mm. it could either go really good or really bad Mm. and i was on the latter part of that um but all in all between world championships and Olympic Games, I have uh I have nine medals. Dang. Wow. Yeah. So you medaled up. And if we and if we 
if we went back to me running the collegiate world championships, the uh, the world university games, then it would be eleven medals. Man, that's wow. a lot of medals, bro. Wow, so, that's, a, that's a lot. You got to be fast, fast. <laughs> so what's your what's your fastest time? My fastest time in the one ten hurdles is uh twelve ninety five, and at the time I think that was number seven or eight all time. Dang. Uh, because when I ran it, the world record was twelve twelve eighty eight. Um, that's that's about the time it takes to blink, you know. Jesus Christ! Uh, Sound fast. I don't know what well, you, you top 10 did a lie. He top 10 did a lie. <laughs> right. That 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 closed the deal speed, ain't it? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 you racking up all these accolades and you know with the medals and stuff. How do you um so now how does that uh, how does that translate in now you a coach? How does that how do you what do you take some of those like all the accomplishments you have, how does that translate to you? in your culture life at this point? So my biggest thing is really explaining how certain aspects of running should feel because I've been through it and being able to tell my athletes what to expect when they get to a certain point of the season or to a certain meet. Some of those intangibles that other coaches without that experience mm -hmm. can't give the athletes. And so I try to I try to pour my spirit into my athletes so they'll have the same type of dog and tenacity that I had when I competed. Right. Um, your competitive spirit never goes away. Right. It, it never goes away. Uh and the, and the crazy thing is I've competed in front of over a hundred thousand people in the stadium, billions of people on television. And I'm never more nervous than when one of my athletes go to compete because <laughs> it's out of my control at that point. Right. 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 You're right. just hoping, you're just hoping that they execute the game plan that you all went over. Right. As yeah. well as it being a reflection on you also. You right. Know, in some right. in some shape. Right. My name, my name is on that. So right. exactly. We, we need that to still be good right right <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get more opportunities though right like, exactly perform. exactly right. so right now uh it's really early in the season we've had two meets um i have so i have i actually have five male hurdlers in my staple mm. um right now they're ranked number one number three number seven i think number 12 or 13 in the country right now sound good to me my, yeah. <laughs> my my other one my fifth one didn't quite make i don't know if he made the top 20. um he's a freshman that was his very first meet he missed making the final by one spot so wow. he's still young. is he looking young. right he's and he's young. still looking very promising yeah yeah you know? wow um and then i have my my top female hurdler is number two in the country right now dang so wow. so we'll you stand some things together you stand yeah. you stand we'll, we'll, your name good out there in the street <laughs> so it's, it's happening my uh oh, yeah. my top sprinter i think he's number three or four in the 60 meters right now okay um, so it's it's coming together it's coming together wow. how did you how did you know you wanted to coach yo like did you just you just always wanted to stay in the track track and field game or did you just it was something oh, that was always in you when you were running or how did you know you want to get into coaching out so here's the thing like i ran from coaching for a long time mm -hmm. um i worked with my first guy in 2008 like i was still competing at the time right and the first guy that i worked with was a football player who my strength coach was training and he was getting up for the draft he defensive end played at michigan state he was 6'2 270. Jeez. 
he ran a four seven four before I even put my eyes on him. Yeah, at least he was moving. Wow. Two and a half weeks later, I got him down to four five six. Jesus Christ. Wow. And so he went from I don't know mid mid round, late round to like second round, second third round. Dang, that when you uh, knew he got yeah. And so he got drafted by the Bears, then traded to the Colts, and then I don't know how long he was with the Colts. But um, okay. so that was That's the first. Dope. That was the first one. That's and dope. then it was, it was a guy that I trained who was a Paralympian that I that I knew. Um, he we connected through my chiropractor because uh, he went to my chiropractor is a bulldog alum and this cat was a bulldog alum and so that's how we made the connection and uh we actually we linked up for him as he was prepping for the 2008 paralympics we did some workouts and things like that and he came away like we didn't we didn't do the entire season we just did like a little segment in time right and um he wound up i think he wound up winning it uh Dang. in 2008. Uh, so you hit the out the gate yeah like it was it was it was happening early and so i was still competing um and later on towards the tail end of my career when i wasn't competing quite as much i started working with different guys getting ready for college working on getting their 40s down and, and stuff like that so that was kind of my thing and then i started coaching at a at a at a private school i started coaching track at a private school mm. um, I, I i ran away from collegiate coaching because i know the type of grind that it is and and i saw my coaches go through that, that right. grind, and they were always gone they rarely uh had time for family that sort of thing and um, it was taking a toll on them. So my 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 last coach was also a collegiate coach. We we worked together for seven years, I want to say. And he told me at one point he was going on a break. He had been grinding for two years straight and and didn't take a break. You know, and, wow. and, and that's that's how that's how collegiate track and field is you have uh athletes that are good enough to go to the u.s championships and 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 compete or get some experience then you take them to that and that's normally late june early july when that happens and you may have uh a couple of athletes that might make it to the world championships or the olympic games and that's later in 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 july or it's throughout august school starts back in august so now we're back on the recruiting trail you know so um for me coaching collegiately is a grind i'm still uh still adjusting a little bit um but it's good because what i've been working on with my high schoolers you know i have to i have to change it in order yeah. for it to work for collegiate athletes but so far so good like we i have what four the numbers you just ran five down athletes there. in the top 10 in the country right now and this was my first year actually taking over the sprints and hurdles program last year i came late because it took so long for the hiring process mm -hmm. i missed most of the indoor season so i still haven't been there a full year yet um i got there in february so we're about 10 wow. months in Wow. and um i got there at the end of indoor season but i had a full outdoor season of coaching and i was basically assisting the head coach uh, and over the summer he said um he said he wanted to step back and let me take over the sprints and hurdles program and he would um he would be he would be on hand if i needed his help but he just wanted to oversee the entire program the jumps right. the throws everything he wanted to be able to move around a little bit more so i was like okay well cool let's let's do it so 
I, I I still talk with him frequently, just for a little bit of guidance and 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 understanding how to train these kids to be, you know, all they can be. Because uh, North Carolina A and T has a very strong tradition in track and field, uh, primarily the last I would say uh, six or seven years. So it's only it's only been one season that you know we haven't really been in the forefront, and that was last season because there was a coaching change. So the whole mm-hmm. staff minus one coach had changed. And so um, that's pretty much how things went last year. But this year, I mean, we we're seemingly right. right back on it. You know, right. that's what's up, man. That's B. That's so, B. So, yeah, mean? my but my biggest thing uh, right now, along with collegiate coaching, I have uh, I do hurdle camps. And I just did a coach's clinic, uh, not not well two Sundays ago, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before. I did a coach's clinic where I was teaching the coaches my philosophy and my methods behind uh, hurdling and, and how I do things. You know, so um, just how often do you put it. those on? Hmm? How often do you put those on? Those, so, those so that one was my first one. Um, I would like to do that maybe uh, once or twice a year. Um, yeah, maybe once or twice a year. But uh, I have a hurdle a hurdle camp that I put on in the summer. And so I'm doing those things as well. That's what's up, Mr. You working. You ain't you ain't got no no breaks either. Hey, I mean, I'm 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 working. I'm working. It, <laughs> it is it is grind time. Um and, and at some point, I would like to be able to transition to get into combine speed training for these athletes. Uh, so I had two guys that I worked with um, to get their 40s down before they got drafted. And um, and it, it worked out for them, you know, pretty well. So they're both on the West Coast. One plays with the Rams and the other one plays with the Seahawks. Man, I know they're gonna be looking for you because that's how they get them dollars up, get that 40 time down. Yeah, yeah, getting it down. And so um that's also you know what I would like to transition into. We were kind of working on that before I got this job, but I knew that me working on the combine training would still be somewhat of a toss-up, but I knew that this job at North Carolina AT was gonna be you know, um, stable income yeah. happening right then. Yeah. So, Especially yeah. with your experience and, and they track record alone with them going together. Y'all ain't gonna do nothing but great things over there. So that's the plan. That's the plan. And so things are looking, you know, they're headed in that direction. So we definitely got the credentials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got them. Well, look, man, we appreciate having you on. We appreciate hearing your story. Um, it's a blessing to us for you to come on. Well, I mean, I think the this might be our first Olympic person with, with medals. Okay. Oh, no doubt. Okay. So, okay. So no we doubt. appreciate you. But how we end our show is we deal, give motivation for the week. So we go around the room, everybody get a motivation for the week. So okay. You guess we're going to let you start out. What's the motivation for the week? Okay. So with what I do, uh, there are always hurdles in the way. You can't be afraid of them. So you got to be able to attack. So attack whatever that hurdle is in your way. The first hurdle is always fear. The last hurdle is always focus. So you got to you 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 can't be afraid to attack that first hurdle. You would rather knock the hurdle down and have the hurdle knock you down. That last one is focus cuz you see the finish line right there. If you don't finish your hurdle movement properly, you could lose the race because you didn't carry momentum through the finish line. So mm-hmm. um, those are those are my things right there. Uh, I, I, I ain't got to no say fear, that. Stay focused. Yeah. I don't think we got to say, I gotta say that. We don't need to mess that up. Hey. <laughs> That's going to be everybody motivation for the week right there. That's it. Talk right. to hurdles. All right. <laughs> Man, we appreciate you, Brian. We, we hope appreciate you. Be well for you and we'll be watching. If you hey. need anything from us, all you got to do is call. We here. I appreciate it, man. I enjoyed it. All right, thank you. All right.